Well, if you've made it so far through week four, we have just a few more weeks left uh, of the class. I hope you're learning something uh, valuable that you can apply in your life, your ministry, and uh, be encouraged by the book of Revelation. I find that uh, when I read through it, when I study it again, repeat some of the old um, things I already know, it's a renewal for hope. It's a, it's a looking to the future of what Christ will, will do, what he will accomplish in the life of believers uh, around the world. And it's an it's a anticipation for the church that he's coming soon for his church, the bride. And when he brings all these things together, um, he brings um, chaos to peace. He brings uh, newness um, of life. Uh, for, for all those who believe and hope uh, in Jesus. And so just some uh, feedback here on uh, the introduction, the purpose, and some more themes to think about as you look at the book of Revelation. Again, John writes, he is the author, he is the composer of the text. He says he's a partner with us in the tribulation, in the kingdom, and the endurance that's in Christ. So that's the aspect of, of uh, perseverance. Uh, it's an encouraging note to the church to keep moving, to keep thinking about the future that, that Christ will come. So there's that hope for the believer. And uh, he's writing again from the location of, of Patmos, uh, island of Patmos, in chapter 1, verse 9. You'll see that as you read it. Um, the church fathers historically has attributed John writing near the end of, of Domitian's reign. Uh, so most of the Conservative estimate is uh, AD 95. I don't want to argue here in terms of whether it was 81 uh, to 96, or some might even go to a later period of AD 60, or a previous period of time, AD 60 as an earlier date. Uh, I like uh, the more um, uh, older period of, of AD 95, seems to be uh, on the tail end of Domitian's reign as the church is feeling uh, much persecution. Uh, maybe even a step up from when Nero was uh, reigning. Again, maybe uh, you already know this as you read some commentaries, um, some helpful online sources. John is writing uh, to unite and complete the prophetic truth of the Bible. He says this in chapter uh, 1, verse 19, that he hears from the Lord that he's to write these things down. Write them down for the church to deliver them to the seven churches to give them to the believers so that they may know how to live, how to live in view of the hope of the return of Christ. All these things will take place after this has been written down. And so then John writes to encourage the people in the midst of great trial and tribulation and the unfolding of God's judgment upon the earth. And then John writes to motivate the believer to call them to holiness, to call them to persevere, to call them to a holy life on, in view that, that the Lord is, is over and controlling all these things to come to be, um, and he will surely come to recompense those who do not believe. Um, again, one of the fe special features as you look at interpreting uh, apocalyptic literature is that you should know the location of the writing, to where is the author originating the, the source of his understanding, what might he see uh, as he is communicating with his audience. And well, that will also be later picked up in another slide here. But the island of Patmos is um, an important historical and geographical location for you and I to know and understand as we interpret the book of Revelation. The things that John sees, these are important events. Um, the things that are unfolding from chapter 4 all the way to chapter 22. Please make special note when you look at the tribulation period, what is John trying to encourage his reader? As I note here on the slide, he's preparing Israel for the Messiah. The Messiah is going to come. He came in a first um, occasion as we look in the Gospels where he comes into Jerusalem. Definitely the incarnation is that first appearance. And then his announcement as the king. Um, and then the rejection of the king, because um, now the Pharisees in Matthew's gospel, especially chapter 11 through 12, we see that they reject Messiah. And now Jesus' um, program or emphasis is changed, no longer toward Israel, but toward the nation, as um, showing himself as a Messiah, as a savior of, of the world. So, number one, to prepare Israel for her Messiah. Uh, number two... The salvation of Israel, we, we see um, glimmers of, of this hope, this, this um, anticipation that Israel should be saved, Romans 11, uh, 25, and also Jeremiah 
you can look at Ezekiel, the references that I have here on the slide. Now remember, everyone must come to faith. Um, salvation only comes to those who believe. So even as we're focusing on the nation of Israel, they too have to repent. They too have to respond by faith in the Messiah, in Christ, uh, by faith alone, um, through grace alone. So if you hold to the five solas, um, these are the things that Israel must also do, um, as well as you and I as Gentiles who um, come to the promises, who come to Christ, we must believe by faith as well. Now, thirdly, uh, one of the major features of the things that John sees is the judgment that is forthcoming to the unbelievers, the, those who have not repented, those who have not bowed the knees, those who have rejected the Messiah, and so they will be reserved a judgment to come. And we see the great white throne judgment seat as that picture um, of, of a time of testing of um, whether this uh, individual should um, be um, received their reward. And the reward is the second death, which is Hades uh, and death are thrown into the lake of fire uh, for eternity. Now there are some characteristics of birth pains, and this is what we call um, looking at interpreting different um, pericopes in Scripture. It's necessary that we do some correlation with other biblical um, passages. We don't just want to derive one central theological argument from the book of Revelation, meaning that we, we um, uh, send all of our eschatological theological foundation just on Revelation alone. It would be similar to um, studying the Holy Spirit just from the book of Acts and uh, hang all of our, um, our theology on the book of Acts alone. We, we need to do some correlation with other passages, and this is just good hermeneutics as you look at some other passages to, to clarify, to explain, or further elaborate maybe where the author leaves us hanging. And so we go and seek out other, other um, passages to explain and go deeper. But anyway, so what are the beginnings of birth pains? And you know if um, you are married, you have a, uh, a wife who has had children, um, the birth pains come slowly and then they get progressive along the way. And so once they begin, they do not stop until the birth takes place. And so the greater the frequency, the greater the pain uh, moves along, and then finally the birth, uh, the birth of, of the child comes and we celebrate. And so I want you to think about these events that unfold in the book of Revelation and other mentionings of how the end of time will take place. Uh, as, as the disciples ask Jesus, when shall these things take place? And he says, you shall see these things unfold. These will be but signs or birth pains along the way, and then the end shall um, come. The more intensity of, of the pains move along as, as we study eschatology. And so when we interpret different uh, prophetic passages, I want you to view it kind of like this filter. You have the first reference. It's most of the time related to the immediate uh, era or if you're looking at Old Testament um, uh, apocalyptic literature, is when did the prophets speak of these terms? And then when are these terms picked up again? Uh, maybe a second reference in the New Testament. Um, ultimately, we see like in Isaiah 53, the uh, picture of Christ's suffering. And, um, and that was an immediate reference by the prophet Isaiah, but also a picture of the suffering servant to come and uh, ultimately looking at Christ. And then you have your third reference, which ultimately you see the circles getting larger and larger, um, anticipating that final culmination, that final um, capturing of the scene, and the third reference is the second coming of, of Jesus Christ. And then um, here's an example of, of how this might unfold. You have Deuteronomy chapter 18, where Moses uh, talks about Joshua as coming on the scene, a prophet who will be raised up amongst the nation to speak be on behalf of, of Israel. And then also ultimately talking about how Jesus will, will come onto the scene in, in the incarnation, and he will be uh, the spokesperson for Israel. And um, you can look at some of the Davidic Psalms as well as David is referenced in the immediate audience, and then also referencing Christ um, in the first coming. So some guidelines for you and I as we interpret uh, apocalyptic literature. The first is always this, consider the context. Context is king when we do interpretation, whether this is 
outside of uh, apocalyptic literature, where we're studying psalms, lit uh, wisdom literature, a narrative story, or epistolary literature. Context is always king. What is, where is the, what is the, uh, the verse saying? Um, how is the author coming across in the writing? And then what you ultimately should do with any biblical passage is do some correlation. Does the passage, or is the passage that you're studying picked up in other sections of the canonical record? Can we go back to the Old Testament and maybe um, see how the author is using the Old Testament as a foundational proof to what he's saying in the New Testament? And then ultimately you should connect the dots, connect with the author's intent. What was the author, how does the author see the information as he is writing? How is he communicating that with the, the audience? And maybe how is the audience responding? Uh, and so this is often historical consideration as you look at uh, the biblical passage. Some prophetic questions might you ans um, might be um, call us to uh, even deeper questions here, answers. And Jesus um, was approached by his disciples uh, four main questions: When shall the temple be destroyed? What will be the sign of of its destruction? What shall be the sign of your coming? And what shall be the sign of uh, the end? So four interpretive questions that he that he's raised by the disciples, and then Christ answers it in chapter 24. I cite a few of these for you. Watch out, he says, for many will come. Rumors of wars, nations will rise up, famines and natural disasters, persecution of the, of the church, of believers, false prophets and deception. And he says the culmination comes when the good news will be proclaimed to all of the nations. And this is how he answers it to um, his uh, disciples. And this kind of ends our, our summary here as um, we close for... Uh, this week, and as you begin to build more of your uh, interpretation and your discipline of studying the book of Revelation, I'll post this uh, PowerPoint slide in uh, the front page of the announcement, and hopefully this will help you um, clarify any questions that you might have.